Good afternoon. Today or tonight is the 30th yard site of our dear Rebbe and spiritual leader, Nasi Hador, who impacted so many 30 years since his yard site. And I'm getting ready to drive to Queens, New York to pray at the Rebbe's grave site. And I would love to include you if you leave a message here or if you private message me in my prayers for you and your family and for all of Klal Yisrael, for all the people of Israel. But I wanted to share an idea from this week's Torah portion that I think connects so powerfully with the Rebbe's yard site and who the Rebbe was and what he touched on, how, what he taught us and how he continues to impact us. This week's Torah portion is called Chukas. Zoyiz Chukas HaTayda. God tells Moses and Aaron, this is the Chuk of the Torah. What does the Chuk of the Torah mean? So it means something that's engraved, but more importantly it means it's something that's beyond rationale. Rationale. There's three types of mitzvot that God gave us. One is Mishpatim, which means the mitzvot that we would know on our own, we would understand to do just by the fact that we're human beings, that we're moral, don't kill, don't steal, don't kidnap. And then there's the one that God tells us to do, but he gives us an explanation. It's called Eidut. We become a witness for the creation of the world. If it's Shabbos, if it's Tefillin, etc., etc. And then there's the mitzvahs that are chukim, they're beyond rationale. And so to speak, the mother of all chukim, the mitzvah that's beyond all rationale, is the mitzvah of the red heifer, which is the story that the Torah tells us in this week's Torah portion. What's the story of the red heifer? If someone became impure, through touching a person who had passed, someone lifeless, they become impure. But how do they become pure again? And the answer is they would have this red heifer that, and they would take the red heifer and it would be brought as a sacrifice and then they would take the ashes and they would sprinkle it on the person who would become pure after he went to mikvah, after he immersed in the spiritual mikvah. But there's something remarkable. Why is it such a? Why is it called the mother of all chukim? Why is it considered the most inexplicable of all mitzvot? And one of the details is something remarkable. The kohen, the priest, who would sprinkle and purify this person who was impure, he himself. So that means, think about it this way: the person who was purifying. As he was doing the act of purifying someone, he himself became impure. So as the coin purified this person who was impure, he became impure. How can that be? He's making someone pure. And why is that fear? He's trying to help someone and then he gets becomes impure. And the Rebbe gives an explanation, an analogy, which is so powerful. And is that the essence of what the Rebbe taught us and inspired us as the Rebbe built 4,000 Chabad centers all over the world and continues his impact even more than ever in the last 30 years. And the Rebbe says like this, imagine you're a lifeguard at the beach and you're sitting up on the high chair perched up watching the people and someone is drowning and you start screaming to them, hey, start flapping your hands. Start paddling with your feet. You start telling them what to do. They'll get fired in a minute. You're not going to be able to save them by sitting on top of your high chair and telling them what to do. The only way to save a person who's drowning is to jump into the water and get wet. And get into a risk mode yourself. And the same is true if a little kid is in the mud. And you want to get them out. You can't tell them to get out. You got to go in. You might get dirty. Your clothing might get dirty. You might need a shower afterwards. But that's the only way you're going to get them and help them from where they are. Says the Rebbe, the same is true when we help another human being spiritually. Many people, when the Rebbe started the revolution after the Holocaust, the Rebbe came to America where Jewry was decimated, the world Jewry, and the Rebbe inspired so many to reconnect. And people said, why are you dealing with these people that are so disconnected from the Judaism? And why should I go out and help them? It's going to impact me. I might get dirty. I might get wet. Said the Rebbe, that's the message of the Red Hafer. The Kohen, 
who purified the person who was impure, he himself became impure. Because the message the Torah is sending us that there's no way to help another person without yourself getting dirty. You got to get into the mud. You got to jump into the water to help another Jew. And that's what the Rebbe taught his chassidim. Thousands of thousands of chassidim to leave their homes, to leave their communities, to leave their families, and to go out there and to get dirty, to impact the community, to inspire, to lead. Yes, it's uncomfortable. You're not in your surroundings. You're not living where your family is in an environment that you might 100% like. But what we learn from the Red Hafer, the greatest chukah, the most inexplicable of all, is that the only way, the way Hashem made it, the only way to purify is for you to get dirty yourself, is to get into the mud. And that's how the Rebbe inspired thousands of chassid until today. And you see what's going on over the world, and you know that the Rebbe's message and the Rebbe's life is yatami b'chayeo. The Rebbe is with us in a certain sense, even more than he was with us in his life, because now his reach is even greater. And we see it at the picture of the Chabad convention of the rabbis in 1994, the last year before the Rebbe's passing, there was maybe seven, 800 people. Now there's 4,000. In 30 years, it was exponential beyond any reach. I just heard a story, you know, we're all watching the elections in Paris and what's going on there, and we're shocked and worried for the future of Jewry in France. But I just read this story about this girl who moved into an apartment building in Paris, and her Chabad rabbi pushed her to put up a mezuzah, and she put it up, but then some of her friends said, you're crazy, you're in an apartment building, you're in Paris, there's so much anti-Semitism, blah, 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 blah. Please, please take it off. You can't, it's dangerous. And she was scared and she took it off. The next day or a couple of days later, she gets a note from a neighbor of hers that a package came and she wasn't home. They brought it upstairs to the neighbor and the neighbor said, come, I'll give you the package. And she goes upstairs and he delivers her the package. It's an old man. And he says, can I ask you one question? He says, why did you take off the mezuzah? And she says, I took off the mezuzah because I'll be honest, my friends told me it's dangerous, it's this. And he says, let me tell you something, I'm a survivor. And after what I saw in the camps, I wanted to have no connection with Judaism, with God, in any, whatso any way whatsoever. And then, this is years ago, and then when you put up the mezuzah, I used to go by every day and I decided to kiss it. And one day I went there and I prayed and I cried out to God. I felt my connection reconnecting to my Judaism. And then you took it off. He says, please put it back on and I promise you, if you put your mezuzah back on, I'll also put it on. When we get wet, when we get involved, when we get engaged, we're able to help and inspire. Yes, it takes effort, and yes, it might impact us sometimes not in the perfect ways we want, but ultimately, it lifts us all up. God bless you. Have a good day.